Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, and we have a lot to talk about again this week. Not only are a lot of players building new commander decks around cards from Strixhaven and Commander 2021, but also those previews from a little over a week ago, they're influencing some card prices too. We got to see some cards from Modern Horizons 2, as well as a few from Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Now overall, the market is calmer than it has been, but there's still a lot of activity out there, our threshold in today's video is $2, so you're not going to see anything moving less than $2 either up or down today. Quickly before we get into the details though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Modern Horizons 2 products there. They also just restocked on Strixhaven Japanese set booster boxes, and they have a whole lot of other things on the website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles, shipping is free in the United States. And also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start off, as we always do, with the standard legal spotlight. These are the cards that are standard legal, moving the most this week. And this is another sluggish week for standard. Not too surprising. I think people are waiting to see what's going to happen when it comes to live events again in the future. And right now, it's very probable that we're going to get another standard set at least before those live events really get into full swing. So let's see what's happening in the market. First, we have Grim Tutor, the copy from Starter 1999. This is going down again this week, 236 to 105.50. This has been losing value ever since it did get reprinted in Core Set 2021. Being a tutor, though, it does see a good amount of commander play in old and new builds. And our first example of egregious market manipulation this week is Chilane Teller of Tales, the copy from the list. This was removed from the list with Kel time, though. Now, in theory, if you go to your price tracking websites, you're going to see something like this. The card's going down $163.32 to $900. Clearly, this is just market manipulation. The card is worth nowhere near close to $900. Don't pay that for it. So the only reason I'm pointing these out is simply to build awareness, because there are people that ask me all the time what's going on with this card or that card. When you see cards jump thousands or hundreds of dollars all at once, that's just not reality. What's happening with a card like this is somebody's either manipulating the market just as a joke, or in some cases there are sellers that have a listing that they don't want to cancel altogether, but they run out of inventory. So what they do is they put the price up really high to a level nobody's going to actually purchase the card, and then the expectation is they'll have more inventory within a few days, and if that happens, then they'll bring the price back down and people will start buying again. That might work for some sellers, but it does throw the data off when you look at price tracking websites. When it comes to this card in general, since it is on the screen, we'll talk about it quickly. It is a very popular commander, and it is in the 99 of some builds there too. And finally in this section, we have Bone Crusher Giant. This is the copy from the list. It was added with Cal Time, but it was taken away with Strixhaven, so it was only there for one set. It goes up 348 to 891 this week. And this does get a ton of standard play in Mono Red Aggro, Teamer Ramp, various adventures and mid-range builds, and much more. This also continues to see a good amount of play in other formats, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, and Commander. And that brings us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. Again, let's look at some cards going down in value, and then we'll see some going up in value. Anointed Procession. This card was going up for a while, retracting a little this week, down 229 to 4695. The reason it has been hot simply is because, first off, it is a huge commander card, but even more players were picking it up as an upgrade to a couple of the Commander 2021 decks. Lorehold Legacies and Silver Quill Statement, or in other cases, they were trying to build around new cards from those decks in Commander 2021, or from new Strixhaven cards, including Oscar the Reconstructor, Exodus Auric Overlord slash Awaken the Blood Avatar, Felisa Fang of Silver Quill, Shadrach Silver Quill, and Hoffrey Ghost Forge. Sengir Vampire, this is the one from the Beatdown box set. This is one of the foils in that product. It goes down 250 this week, though, to 711. This is the start of a price correction after some recent spikes due to this being dry online. The card itself can see a little commander play. Master of Cruelties, the copy from the Ravnica Allegiance Rectos Guild Kit, goes down 260 to 1569. Again, this is normalization after the card was dry online for a little bit. It is a good commander card, though, in the Kali of the Vast builds and much more in the format. 
Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth. This time we have the Ultimate Masters copy going down in value. It goes down 290 to 2222. And this was reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered, which is why these copies have been soft. It does see a ton of play, though, in Pioneer. It's in Mardu Sacrifice, Rakdos Pyromancer, Vampires. Also sees play in Modern Legacy and Vintage. Plus, this is a very highly played Commander card. This is also in some new builds around Strixhaven cards like Belladros Witherbloom, Exodus Oric Overlord, Dina Soulsteeper, and more. Eldrazi Displacer, the copy from the list, this was only there through Zendikar Rising. It goes down 301 to 699. This is another card that saw some spikes recently that's normalizing now. It does get play in Legacy Eldrazi and Taxes. Also gets a good amount of Commander play in Brea, Ethereum, Shaper, and much more. Finale of Devastation. This goes down 339 to $33. And this is seeing less modern play now in the new meta. However, Devoted Devastation can still see play and still put up a good result there. In Commander, this is also getting additional play. Sometimes it's an upgrade to Quantum Quandrix or Witherbloom Witchcraft. Other times you'll find this in fresh builds from cards from those decks or other cards from Strixhaven. For example, things like Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, Belladros Witherbloom, Dina Soul Steeper, and a lot more. All right, the last card going down in value in this section is Shivan Dragon, although there is another copy of this card going up, which we're going to see in just a moment. The revised one, though, goes down 266 to 2714. The one from the Beatdown box set goes down 561 to 824. When it comes to these copies in particular, they did recently spike, and now they are retracting. However, there is an interest in Classic Dragons right now, which is tied into Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, which is coming out this summer. One of the preview cards we've already seen from that set is a five-color legendary dragon, and it is on the screen right now, Tiamat. And here's a dragon going up in value, at least in part because of the reasons we just mentioned. This is Nicol Bolas the Ravager, up $2.02 to $34.99. This is also a fairly popular commander, and is in the 99 of other builds there as well. Here's the other Shivan Dragon. This is the one from 5th edition, rebounding this week up $278 to $15. Thousand Year Storm goes up $311 to $20.50. This is great in commander builds with the new Magecraft mechanic. Solid upgrade to the Prismari Performance Commander 2021 deck. Also, this is in a lot of new builds around cards from that deck, and other cards from Strixhaven, including Veyran Voice of Duality. Galazeth Prismari, Zaphi Thunder Conductor, and Cody Vociferous Codex. And our last Pioneer card today is Tireless Tracker. This is the one from Mystery Booster. It goes up 345 this week to 1381. In Modern, many times you'll find this in Amulet Titan and more there. Gets a little legacy play as well, but I think this is moving mostly, again, because of Commander. This is getting picked up as an upgrade to the Quantum Quandrix and Witherbloom Witchcraft Commander 2021 decks. And again, some players are just building around cards from those decks from scratch, things like Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, Essex Fractal Bloom, and Eudora Grave Gardener. And that takes us to the modern legal spotlight. First, some cards going down in value, starting with Bitter Blossom, the one for Morning Tide. It goes down 503 to 6118. Another card that is retracting after some recent increases. This can see a little legacy play, though. And it is getting additional commander play in Exodus Orc Overlord, Shadrick Silver Quill, Belladros Witherbloom, and more. All right, here we go. The first of a few fetch lands in a row that are going down in value. This is Marsh Flats from Modern Masters 2017. It goes down 508 this week to $44. Now, Wizard said a number of months ago that they were going to reprint enemy fetches in Modern Horizons 2. However, a little over a week ago, they did show us these cards. We found out that they are indeed going to be rares in the main set, and we also saw that they are going to have some other versions of the cards, including extended art copies, and classic frame copies too. So it stands to reason that this summer there's going to be a lot of enemy fetches floating around, and that means for the most part the prices on these cards are going down currently. When it comes to playability, I mean these are fetch lands, you know they're going to see play pretty much wherever they're legal. Here's the next one going down in value, it's Misty Rainforest from Modern Masters 2017 as well, it goes down 648 to 7278. And Verdant Catacombs. As you can see, the copies from Modern Masters 2017 are the ones losing value the quickest. This one goes down $7.27 to $70.32. Noel's Vine Dragon. The copy from Shadowmoor retracting after some big spikes over the last couple weeks. It goes down $7.70 to $21.09. The copy from Mystery Boosters is relatively steady right now, although it does look like it's about to start going down soon too. Now the reason this card got hot is because of a Strixhaven card. There's a lot of players putting this in various commander builds alongside Thrumming Stone, 
and the card from Strixhaven, Dragon's Approach. Also, too, there could be a little interest on this card simply because it is a dragon for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Okay, some modern cards going up in value, starting with Archmage's Charm. It goes up 527 to 1366. This is seeing a lot of modern play. It's in Through the Breach, Control Builds of all kinds, Demir Inverter. I do think some of this increase, though, is driven by the fact that Counterspell is coming to Modern soon when Modern Horizons 2 comes out. Many players are specking that that card could push Modern Control decks even more. They've been doing pretty well to begin with, though. Additionally, this has seen increased Commander play, too, in Octavia Living Thesis and Naru Miha Master Wizard. Both of those are in the Prismari Performance Commander 2021 deck, but you might remember Naru is a reprint from Dominaria. Here's a fetch land going up in value. It is Flooded Strand, the original from Onslaught. Of course, this is an ally fetch. It goes up 627 to 8549, and it is having a bounce back week after it lost some value last week, though prior to that, it spiked pretty heavily. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that players were interested in some of these classic border cards after Time Spiral Remastered came out. Again, we're talking about a fetch land here. This one sees playing Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Creekwood Liege, this card is still hot. Modern Masters 2015 goes up 264 to 1997. Even Tide goes up 658 to 2795. Now, all the interest in this card came out of new Commander 2021 as well as Strixhaven cards. A lot of players wanted this as an upgrade to the Witherbloom Witchcraft deck. As a matter of fact, if you watch the Command Zone podcast this week, they did a video where they took a bunch of the pre cons and did some budget upgrades. They did add this card to that deck there. That could have brought a little more attention to it too. Aside from all that, there are players that are building around cards from scratch, both from Commander 2021 and Strixhaven, and they want to add this card. This is in builds like Willow Dusk Essence Seer, Gaio Master Chef, Belladros Witherbloom, Dina Soul Steeper, and Valentin Dean of the Vein slash Lisette Dean of the Root. Elvish Piper, the copy from 7th edition, dries up online this week and spikes a little bit. It goes up 1110 to 1869. This does get Commander play in my L, the Anima builds, and more. Savra, Queen of the Golgari. This time we're looking at the copy from Ravnica City of Guilds. Last week we saw the Guild Kit copy going up in value. Well, this one's catching up. Up $22.99 this week to $26.75. And this one is moving for similar reasons that Creekwood Liege is moving. This happens to be a fairly popular commander, though, too. It is another card that people are picking up to add to the Witherbloom Witchcraft Commander 2021 deck. And there are players building decks from scratch around cards from that deck, as well as other cards from Strixhaven. Again, you're going to see this in things like Gaio Master Chef, Belladros Witherbloom, Dina Soul Steeper, and Valentin Dean of the Vein. Ren and Six, the copy from the list. It was removed, though, with Strixhaven. It goes up 2836 this week to 10976. And that does feel a little inflated. I think, again, you're in a situation where maybe there's not as many copies of this online this week compared to the previous week. But this does see a lot of play in Modern. It's in Nib to Light, Grill Midrange, Jund, and more. Also sees Vintage and Commander play. All right, Cryptic Command. Let's look at the Modern Masters 2015 copy first. It is going up 230 to 2695, which sounds pretty legitimate, and we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. But secondly, though, the copy from the list, which sure it was removed after Zendikar Rising, is not really going up the number you see on the screen. Again, this is something you might see if you look at one of the price tracking websites. It could look like it's going up 4,291.19 to 6,843.90. This card was being egregiously manipulated last week. This week, that continues, as you can see. So if this type of thing does go week to week, I will stop covering these in the video. But I just wanted to give one more push, make sure people understood why these are going up in value, and understood that these values are not real at all. This is just completely fiction at this point. Clearly, that card is worth nothing close to what you're seeing there. It would be closer to the Modern Masters 2015 value, if anything. So I did say, though, there could be a legitimate reason that, in general, this card could be going up in value, at least slightly. And that is, again, because it is in modern control builds. And like I said, with Counterspell coming to the format soon, some players think those decks could get better. Additionally, this does see Commander play, and some players have picked this up as an upgrade to the Prismari Performance Commander 2021 deck. And like all these cards, other people are building new decks from scratch around Commander 2021 as well as Strixhaven cards, and this is showing up in decks like Veyron Voice of Duality, Octavia Living Thesis, and Jadzi Oracle of Arcavio slash Journey to the Oracle. All right, that's going to take us to the Vintage Spotlight. A couple things to remember as we get into this section. First off, be careful because market manipulation is happening out there. Obviously, if it can happen to Cryptic Command, it can happen to a lot of older cards. It's easier to move those than it is a card that has more copies out there. 
Secondly, in this section as well as any section in the video, we're talking about average prices of high grade cards here. So by definition, it is an average price. If you shop around, you should be able to find the cards cheaper than you see them here. Also, if you want a lower grade, like a light played copy, moderate, heavy played, you can get them a lot cheaper in some cases. Just remember that. Also, vintage cards are being graded more and more now than ever. So when it comes to high grade graded copies, those can push an average price of a card up a little bit. And that does change the way you have to think about some of these vintage card prices going forward. With all that being said, though, let's see what's happening in the vintage market. First off, we have Taiga, our first reserve list card of the day, as you can see from the upper right hand corner. This is the copy from Revised. It goes up $5.95 this week to $4.40.99. Talarian Academy, we cannot blame Commander for this one. It is banned there, but it does see vintage play. It goes up $7.27 to $2.18.21. Savannah, another Revised Dual Land. It goes up $9.13 to $3.79.92. Animate Wall from Unlimited. This goes up $11.44 to $42.90. North Star, and you will see a lot of cards from these early expansions going up at least a little bit this week. This one goes up $15.64 to $146.99. My J Jin, this is the original from Arabian Nights. It goes up $17.50 to $130. Gaia's Avenger, this goes up $18.42 to $124.20. Willow Seder, up $22.78 to $249.95. Winter Blast, the original copy from Legends, goes up $24.50 to $99. Mirror Universe goes up $24.60 to $474.50. Lord of the Pit, the copy from Unlimited, goes up $25 to $95. Grim Monolith, this goes up $25.68 to $445.44. Many times you'll find this one in Legacy, Karn Echoes, and Mono Green Cloud Post. Also, it's a very popular Commander card. It is good with a new card too, Oscar the Reconstructor. If you are lucky enough to already own a copy of this, it is a good upgrade to Lorehold Legacies. Or again, if you want to build around Oscar from scratch, it's a good addition there. The original Urza's Avenger from Antiquities, it goes up $27.60 to $86.98. Cyclopean Tomb, the copy from Unlimited, up $28.49 to $299.99. Mana Barbs, again from Unlimited, up $30.48 to $99.95. Raging River from Unlimited goes up $37.08 to $268.09. Hellfire goes up $38.50 to $279.99. The original Revelation from Legends goes up $48.69 to $174.97. Flying Carpet, again the original copy this time from Arabian Nights. It goes up $54.36 to $123.50. Winter Orb, the copy from Unlimited, goes up $58.75 to $173.72. Elephant Graveyard, up $62.50 to $437.50. Ruck Egg, this is the Arabian Nights copy, but this is also the B variation, which has the lighter casting cost in the upper right hand corner. It goes up $64.52 this week to $134.47. Magical Hack from Unlimited goes up $71.32 to $240. Demonic Hordes from Unlimited goes up $86.70 to $126.79. Old Man of the Sea goes up $90 to $609.98. Pyramids goes up $116.76 to $595.95. I remember doing a video years ago where I said, hey, this is a great card to pick up cheap because it's going to go up in value over time, being a reserve list card from Arabian Nights. I hope you listened to me back then. I can't believe this card costs this much. And I did look at True Sales. This price is pretty legit. It is between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. Next, we have Dakin Blackblade, the original again from Legends. It goes up 118.10 to 279.97. When it comes to True Sales, I have seen high-grade raw copies sell for about $150. But cheap copies of this card have dried up, and here's why. Now, at the beginning of the video, you might remember I showed those Modern Horizons 2 products. Well, if you have a keen eye, you might have noticed on the booster box as well as the bundle, the character does look a lot like Dakin Blackblade, and there are players speculating that Dakin is going to get some kind of new card in the set. Some people have even said it might be a Planeswalker, so that has sparked some interest in this original copy. Illusionary Mask from Unlimited goes up $269.04 to $785.22. Now this is a price between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies, but it is closer to the high-grade graded copies. Raw copies in high-grade can go for closer to $220. Guardian Beast, again we have a card that the value is between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies, but much like the previous card, this is closer to the high-grade graded copies. It goes up $278.43 this week to $1,294.15. Time Vault from Unlimited, going up in theory $280 to $2,500. I do think it's just short of that, though. 
Raw high grade copies seem to be selling for 900 to 1000. High grade graded copies can get closer to 2000 though. Tropical Island from Unlimited going up 829.50 to 2399.50 is that for real? Well, high grade copies raw can sell for about 1525. Graded copies recently have sold for about 1700. Considering the raw copies have moved up to where they are, I would assume future graded copies will sell for more. They could hit this price point. And before we leave, I just had to give you one example of some pretty egregious market manipulation. This is Island of Wok Wok. It goes up in theory $1,997.99 to $3,711.56. In reality, if you look at true sales, high grade raw copies are selling for about $300, graded for about $1,000. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. A lot of cards to talk about. Let's jump in. Land Tax, the copy from the Battle Royale box set. This is going up $201 to $42. Great Commander card in many builds, old and new. Balefire Dragon, this is the one from Innistrad. It goes up $207 to $40. It's another dragon, perhaps moving for the reasons we mentioned earlier. It is a popular Commander card too, and it has seen some increased play recently in some Mila Crafty Companion slash Luca Wayward Bonder builds. Read the Ruins, this is from the list, but it was only there during Kel time. This does get some commander play. It goes up 209 to 428. Avacyn Angel of Hope, the copy from Avacyn Restored. It goes up 212 to 4526. Fairly popular commander and found in other builds old and new too. Kali of the Vast being one of the more popular ones. Sylvan Tutor from Portal goes up 217 to $85. It is a tutor, so you know it's going to see some commander play in both old and new builds. Goblin Welder. This is the one from Dual Decks Elves vs. Inventors. This particular copy only comes in foil. It goes up 226 this week to 1048. Good upgrade to the Lorehold Legacies Commander 2021 deck. This was added to that deck in the Command Zone podcast video I mentioned earlier. Plus, this card got a mention in another one of their videos this week as well. That could have brought some attention to it, of course. Now, when it comes to Commander play, it's not just an upgrade to that particular Commander 2021 deck. Many players are building around cards from scratch from that deck, and they're picking this up or they're picking this up for some decks around Strixhaven cards. These cards include Oscar the Reconstructor, Alibu Ancient Witness, and Quintorius Field Historian. Also, this does see legacy play in Painter's Grindstone decks. Oriak Champion, the copy from Iconic Masters, goes up 227 to 4441. This does get some commander play in different builds, but it does see a good amount of modern play nowadays, too. It's in Heliod Company, Hammer Time, Humans, and more. Crater Hoof Behemoth, this is the copy from Jumpstart. It goes up $228 to $60.99. You'll find this one in Legacy Elves, but I do think it is truly Commander that's pushing the price point. This is a very good upgrade to Quantum Quandrix or Witherbloom Witchcraft. Also, it is seeing additional play in Commander around cards from Commander 2021 and Strixhaven. These include Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, Essex Fractal Bloom, Belladros Witherbloom, and this did get a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week too. Food Chain from Mercadian Mass. This is also on the list and has been for every set so far, but this copy goes up $230 to $69 regardless. This is a big commander card and combo enabler in the format and builds old and new. This also sees legacy play in Food Chain, of course. Powder Keg from Urza's Destiny. This does see a little commander play. It goes up $238 this week to $2444. Imperial Recruiter. This is the one from Masters 25. It goes up $240 to $4491. This gets a lot of commander play in various builds, again, old ones and new ones. This is also in the Legacy Painter's Grindstone build and in Food Chain there too. Additionally, this got a mention on the Command Zone podcast this week as well. Magma Sliver, this goes up $246 to $30. Now, Commander Sliver decks are always hot, but they did become hotter recently due to the reprinting of Sliver Legion and some other key slivers in Time Spiral Remastered. Now, additionally, there's another reason that slivers could start creeping up again, but it does tie into a leak. So if you don't want to hear the leak, I'll let you skip to the next card now. Now, this leak doesn't have any photos or any proof attached to it. It might not be true at all. But there was a comment left on a message board from somebody who claimed to have knowledge of Modern Horizons 2. They said there is going to be an Azoria sliver that has a standalone ability. It doesn't need other slivers. So, if you believe the leak, there's at least one sliver that's going to be in the set, maybe more. Anvil of Bogardin. This goes up 246 to 94.99. This is in commander builds like Turgrid God of Fright, slash Turgrid's Lantern, Tiny Bones Trinket Thief, and more. Vorinclex Voice of Hunger. This is the copy from the list. Now, this joined the list with Keltime, but it did leave with Strixhaven, so it was only there for one set. It goes up 250 this week to $55. 
popular commander card. It is seeing increased play now in Belladros Witherbloom and Jadzi Oracle of Arcavios. Consecrated Sphinx goes up $251 to $48. This is the copy from Iconic Masters. Big commander card. It's in a lot of different decks. Defense Grid. This is the one from 8th edition going up $253 to $21. This has received some increased commander play in Rionia Fire Dancer builds. This is also in a number of decks in Modern and Legacy. I didn't want the Commander Spotlight to feel left out when it came to market manipulation, so here's an example. Denizen of the Deep, this is the one from Portal Second Age, going up in theory 261 to 204.35. Clearly not worth anything close to that. This card is just probably barely worth a couple dollars, honestly. Now this particular copy can be harder to find in good condition, obviously, but this is not a true price point. It can see a tad bit of Commander play, though. Reprocess from Urza Saga goes up 263 to 599. This is getting a lot of play now due to a card from Witherbloom Witchcraft. This could be a good upgrade there, or you might want to build around the card I'm talking about from scratch, and that is Guyon Master Chef. Winds of Change, the fifth edition copy. This goes up 270 to 2514. This is a solid commander card. Now seeing some more play and builds around Rionia Fire Dancer. Tooth and Nail from Mirrodin. It goes up 278 to 3324. I have seen this used as an upgrade in Quantum Quandrix. I have also seen this in original commander builds around S6 Fractal Bloom. Overall, solid commander card though. Primal Vigor, the copy from the list, and this has been on the list since the start. It goes up 280 to 49.99. Great upgrade to Quantum Quandrix as well as Witherbloom Witchcraft. Also, I've seen this in original builds around cards from those decks: Adrix and Neb Twin Casters, S6 Fractal Bloom, Willow Dusk Essence Seer, and Guyon Master Chef. Bramble Sovereign, I've also seen this added to Quantum Quandrix decks, also in new builds around Adrix and Neb Twin Casters and Essex Fractal Bloom. It goes up 284 to 2973. Jace the Mind Sculptor, Double Masters up 266 to 6541. The original World Wake copy goes up 284 to 7655. This is in Commander builds like Attracts a Praetor's Voice and many others, including new ones like Jazz the Oracle of Arcavios. This is in modern control builds as well and other places in that format. But like we mentioned in the video earlier, a lot of people are specking around cards from those decks. This also sees play in Legacy Miracles builds and more there. Gets vintage play too, and it did get a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week as well. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage. It goes up 301 to 119.74. This gets Commander play in Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, and more. Retraced Image. This goes up 352 to 925. This is getting increased Commander play now. Some players are adding this as an upgrade to the Prismari Performance Commander 2021 deck. Others are building around cards from that deck from scratch and using this Veyron Voice of Duality, Octavia Living Thesis, or even the reprinted Talran Sky Summoner. Additionally, I've seen this in some Galazeth Prismari builds too. Counterspell, the copy from Mercadian Masks is jumping up 355 to 591 this week. Now, this was reprinted in the Strixhaven Mystical Archive subset. But this copy of the card is a little dry online this week, and it is jumping up in value quite a bit. Now, like we mentioned earlier in the video, this is going to be in Modern Horizons 2, which will make it Modern Legal. And that is why there's some interest around at least some of the more unique copies of the card. It is also a huge commander card in many decks old and new. Good old Soul Ring, the copy from Revised. It goes up 359 to 2658. This gets reprinted all the time in commander products and other various places but it is a huge commander card, pretty much an auto-include in all builds. Also gets a lot of vintage play too. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus goes up 376 to 32185. This is getting some additional commander play in Dina Soulsteeper. More on the Boundless, this is the copy from the list that did join the list with Keltime. Very popular commander, many times this is in Dragon builds, which we talked about that tribe earlier. It's also in Sliver builds, and we talked about that tribe earlier too. This goes up 409 to 2648. Worm Coil Engine, Scars of Mirrodin, up 263 to 3324. Commander Anthology Volume 2 goes up 443 this week to 3428. This is a good upgrade to Lorehold Legacies, or even Quantum Quandrix. It is seeing play now in some new Commander builds around cards from Commander 2021 and Strixhaven. These cards include Oscar the Reconstructor, Alibu Ancient Witness, Essex Fractal Bloom, Hoffrey Ghost Forge. Additionally, this gets modern play in Tron builds and more there. Even get some vintage play, and it got a command zone mention this week as well. The Arch Enemy copy of Cemetery Reaper makes the video again. This time it goes up 490 to 2375. It's up one week, down another week. It is because there's not a lot of copies of this online at any given time. And for whatever reason, the card's been pretty turbulent. 
I would assume there's probably just like one seller that has the card listed at a kind of high price. But regardless, let's talk about it a little bit since it is here. This is found in various Commander Zombie builds, and I have seen this appear in Killian Ink Duelist decks too. Also, I'm going to mention that Modern Horizons 2 potential leak again, so if you don't want to hear anything more about that, I'll let you skip to the next card. Another thing that same poster said was we would see a new legendary zombie in the set. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre from Rise of the Eldrazi. This is in Commander Kozilek the Great Distortion and much more. It goes up 491 this week to 84.95. Liege of the Hollows of 502 to 1856. Now this card is on the reserve list, which is why it's probably moving as much as it is, but it is moving for true reasons, even if they are speculative. Now, it has seen some increased play in Commander recently, first and foremost, though. It is sometimes in those Toski Bear of Secrets builds. But the timing of this jump is tied into more box art from Modern Horizons 2. This time it is art from the set Booster Box, which I did show at the start of the video. On that box, there is a squirrel surrounded by other squirrels, which does have people speculating that there is going to be a new squirrel lord in that set. Sliver Queen, we talked about slivers earlier, but this is the sliver lord that is on the reserve list. It goes up 535 to 549.50. Now, if I pulled the price for this card at the exact same time this week as I did last week, I do think it would have fallen off. It has been pretty stable throughout the week. Attrition, the copy from Commander, it goes up $5.99 to $17, and this has seen some increased Commander play in Belladros Witherbloom and Exodusauric Overlord. Lotus Vale, this goes up $6.39 to $76.99, and this does see Commander play in various builds, also getting harder and harder to find in good condition, and it is on the reserve list. Wellspring, another reserve list card, but again, there's some speculation behind this one. It goes up $9.98 to $19.44. And this time, the speculation is due to a Modern Horizons 2 preview we saw a little over a week ago. The card was Urza Saga. It is a land. It's also a saga. And if there's more of these in the set, it stands to reason that Wellspring might become a better card in Commander. Again, though, I think the reason it's jumping as much as it is is because it is on the reserve list. This is another one that may have fallen off if I grabbed the price at the exact same time this week as I did last week. Deranged Hermit from Urza's Legacy up $16.71 to $99.97 in theory. In reality, if you look at sales of high-grade copies, they are selling for about $70, which is $10 higher than they were selling last week, so the card is trending up. Not quite up to $100, although this is not the type of card where you see a lot of high-grade graded copies selling. If that were to happen, then maybe it could actually pass this price point. Regardless, though, this could be a good upgrade to Quantum Quandrix with Essex Fractal Bloom as your commander, or you could just build around that card again from scratch. It's also been getting more commander play recently in those Toski Bear of Secrets builds. And like we mentioned a moment ago, the Modern Horizons 2 set booster box art is also pushing this, obviously. And that's going to take us to the premium spotlight. There's a lot of premium cards on the move. I could do videos every day this week and not cover them all, but... I try to give you a sampling of what's going on out there. Now, there's still a lot of market manipulation too, as you can imagine, so be careful if you're making any purchases. Do your research. One example of a card I didn't choose this week to spotlight, but I'll mention it briefly, is Arclight Phoenix. It does appear that there's a speculative targeted buyout on those foils, and that speculation is based on the fact some people think careful study could show up in Modern Horizons 2. Again, because it felt like a buyout and it didn't feel very stable, I didn't want to throw it in here. I figured by the time the video actually got posted, it could be back down again, but just something to be aware of. Let's take a look at what I did choose, though. Niv Magnus Elemental, the only existing foil from Return to Ravnica. It goes up 1806 to 3499. Now, there has not been a lot of sales on this card. High grade copies were selling for about $5 to $6 not too long ago, but the asking price for these cards has gone up quite a bit. Why is that? There is a modern deck running this as a potential win condition, which maybe that deck could get better with Counterspell in the format, perhaps. I have also seen players trying to make that work in Legacy, too. It is being picked up by some Commander players as an upgrade to Prismari Performance, or in other cases for original builds around Vayra and Voice of Duality. Retraced Image. Now, we talked about this one earlier. The foil from Torment goes up 2929 to 4148. Snuff Out is next, and this is the foil copy, the only foil copy for Mercadian Masks, and it goes up $32.84 to $199.99 in theory. In reality, high-grade raw copies have sold for about $45. Obviously, haven't seen any graded copies sell in high-grade. This is, again, not the type of card most people get graded, 
but in theory, I guess one could sell for a lot more than $45. This is in a number of Commander decks old and new, including the popular Yuriko the Tiger Shadow Builds. Archmage's Charm, another card we talked about earlier, the foil for Modern Horizons, goes up $35.05 to $80.65 in theory. High-grade copies, though, are selling closer to $50. Again, though, they are on the rise and could hit $80 pretty soon at this rate. Now, I'm not featuring them all in this section, but there does appear to be a number of buyouts when it comes to Modern Horizons foil cards. A few that you may want to look at include Urza Lord High Artificer, although there's a lot of manipulation around that card right now. Force of Negation and Hex Drinker, however, do feel like they're spiking a little more naturally. Force of Negation is another one of those cards that people are speculating on since Counterspell is coming to the modern format. Savra Queen of the Golgari. This is the Ravnica City of Guilds foil copy going up $44.32 to $69. Is that for real? Well, when you look at true sales, they are breaking $50. The next one might get closer to this price point. And finally, we have Grim Monolith, the foil from Urza's Legacy. It goes up $140 to $4,649.99, and that price point is in between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Next week, there's going to be some more Modern Horizons 2 previews out, so I'm sure there's going to be some influence from those cards in the secondary market, but we will be here to talk all about it. Until then, though, hey, thanks for watching. Remember to stay safe out there. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.